To the early 21st century human, the planet Venus represented one of the most hostile and inhospitable environments seen in the Terran star system. But over centuries, with a lot of hard work and dedication, Venus would be transformed into one of the most beautiful tropical paradise planets this side of the Milky Way. But how was this accomplished? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at Sector 001 and humanity's drive to conquer its own solar system, starting with the planet Venus, to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, this video is quite different than my usual videos, with me patching together tiny little bits of Alpha and Beta Canon and expanding them out with my own imagination into a full-blown story of human triumph in the Star Trek universe. As a result, I'd love to hear all your comments on what you think about this type of video, and whether you'd like to see me continue on with the various other planets and moons in our solar system. And as always, because this is a Beta Canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Humanity's path to becoming an interstellar powerhouse did not start with First Contact or Zephyrin Cochran's First Warp Flight, but rather with humanity conquering its own solar system. Since the beginning of spaceflight, beings of the planet Earth dreamed of visiting other planets within their own solar system. To this end, various nations and eventually Earth's world government would push the limits of Terran technology to make these goals a reality with varying degrees of success. During the mid to late 20th century, Venus was considered one of the harshest planets in Sector 001, and with good reason. Second planet from the Sun, and named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, Venus has been often called Earth's sister or twin planet. This was because of Venus's similarity in size and mass to that of Earth but that is where the similarity truly ends. Venus has the hottest surface temperature of any planet in the solar system, with an average mean temperature of 464 degrees Celsius, and was shrouded by an opaque layer of highly reflective clouds of sulfuric acid, preventing Venus's surface from being seen from orbit. This coupled with many other variables such as Venus's high atmospheric pressure being 92 times stronger than that of Earth, and Venus's much weaker magnetic field, made scientists overlook the planet for possible colonization for almost half a century. But eventually, humanity's resourcefulness and imagination began to form plans that could potentially make Venus a new Garden of Eden for humanity. It was generally believed that Venus started out its life very similar to that of Earth with oceans that covered approximately 80% of the planet's surface. But as Earth's sun grew in luminosity, it would cause Venus's oceans to evaporate far more quickly, creating a runaway greenhouse effect, which would lead to Venus becoming a barren and inhospitable rock. But 21st century scientists began to hypothesize that if the greenhouse effect could be reversed, that the planet could be restored to its former glory, with an oxygen-rich atmosphere, large bodies of water, and temperatures that would make the planet akin to Earth's tropical regions. Then, by creating a technologically induced magnetic field, the planet could truly be made to be Earth's twin sister. Of course, the problem with this grand idea was that such technologies to terraform the planet did not yet exist. But these ideas planted themselves in the brains of several of Earth's scientists that would begin the long process of making the dream of Venus a reality. And by 2026, early plans had been made to start the long process of terraforming the planet with several highly classified missions. Of course, Earth's own tumultuous history would get in the way of these plans as World War III, a devastating nuclear conflict, 
would see humanity torn asunder, with over 600 million people killed in this conflict. But instead of being plunged into another dark age, one man, Zephyrin Cochrane, would do what no human of the time thought was possible, break the warp barrier. And because of this monumentous event, the Vulcan species would make contact with Earth, and humanity would come together as a unified force, realizing that they were not alone in the galaxy. USPA, the United Earth Space Probe Agency, along with the newly created organization called Starfleet, would begin to develop several new warp engine systems in the hopes of exploring interstellar space. Breaking the warp two, three, and four barriers less than a century after Cochrane's original warp flight. But long before these breakthroughs would become a reality, humanity would turn its eyes once again back to Venus. With humanity's own recent history, where it quite possibly could have been wiped out of existence, there was a major push for Earth's new planetary government to begin colonization of other worlds, including those in the solar system. With humanity spread across the stars, this would ensure its survival, as no one catastrophic event could wipe out the human race. And with Terran tenacity at their doorstep, Earth's government would begin to set up several colonies within its own system's border. Construction of various dome cities on the moon had already been established during the early 2030s, but these facilities would be expanded upon with several new construction techniques developed at the time. But domed cities were not exactly what the population of Earth had in mind. What humanity wanted was to step onto another world, with no spacesuit, and take deep breaths of that planet's own oxygen. But to do this, one of the planets in our solar system would have to be terraformed to support life. Of course, there were two candidates with great potential in the Terran solar system, Venus and Mars. And both would begin the long process of becoming life-sustaining planetary bodies, with both presenting unique challenges for early human explorers. And although both difficult to terraform, Venus was actually the planet with a greater potential for success. This was because its atmosphere already held the necessary elements to make its terraforming an easier reality. The starship's tiller and Enterprise early USPA starship designs left over after World War III were quickly refit and assigned to begin the terraforming process. These vessels seeded the clouds of Venus with an algae designed to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. They also traveled to the Kuiper Belt and set several large asteroids to collide with Venus, bombarding its surface with ice asteroids to increase Venus's rotational speed, which in turn would increase the planet's magnetic field strength. Eventually, their efforts cooled the surface of Venus and produced rain that eventually yielded large oceans of water, a process which took almost a full century to be completed. And by the birth of the United Federation of Planets, Phase two of the terraforming of Venus would be underway, with a large number of sea bases being constructed to reduce the high acid content of the water and begin the process of growing ocean vegetation. Once this process was complete, animal life forms would be seeded in Venus's oceans and allowed to develop, while specially designed terraforming stations would be built at key locations on Venus's surface. Seeding the planet with various genetically engineered plants designed to survive in a more jungle-like environment, these plants would be allowed to grow and thrive and several animal and insect life forms were slowly released on Venus's surface, a process that would not be fully complete until the early 24th century. By the 2340s, Venus had truly begun to embrace its new status, allowing several genetically engineered animals suitable for its environment to take hold. And in 2386, to mark the 100-year anniversary of James T. Kirk's historic and successful mission 
to revive the species of humpback whales to Earth's own oceans. Venus would be given its own colony of humpback whales to flourish in its oceans. And finally, by the latter part of the 25th century, Venus would become its own self-sustaining planetary body, no longer requiring technology to aid in its development, and becoming a tropical paradise, fully colonized with a booming population of almost 2 billion inhabitants. Created to ensure that humanity would survive a cataclysmic catastrophe, Venus would become one of the shining examples of human ingenuity, which would continue to inspire scientific research and development of terraforming technology, earning its historically triumphant place in humanity's history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the planet Venus and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel terraform Mars, Europa, or one of the other planetary bodies in our solar system? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Live long and prosper.